Welcome to 3 Minute Pro. If you're enjoying these videos, don't forget to like and subscribe using the buttons below. The Nikon F801 or the N8008 in the US was released in 1988 and it is a solid durable 35mm autofocus SLR. This is the updated F801S which was released in 1991. It's probably the cheapest camera to allow you to have full metering with Nikon F mount lenses going all the way back to the 1970s. And this is one of the things that makes this camera so special. I bought this one for £30 including a camera bag, zoom lens and flash. On the top right of the camera you can find the shutter release, the film rewind button, another button for exposure compensation and the power switch here. You can turn it on, you can turn it off and you can also have it on but with uh, annoying beeping noises. The LCD shows you all the different settings, the metering, the exposure mode and so forth. This is the command dial which allows you to alter the settings. On the rear of the camera is a button for illuminating the viewfinder and an exposure lock. If you have a subject with a really bright background then all you have to do is point the camera at the subject, closer to the subject, hold down the exposure lock and then reframe it and you'll get the correct exposure. On the left of the camera are the buttons that allow you to change the different settings and modes. This one is for changing your metering mode. As you can see here it's set to matrix metering, now it's set to centre weighted and now spot. The mode button allows you to choose from the following options. You've got aperture priority, manual, high speed program, ordinary program, dual program where the camera chooses which program mode to use, shutter priority and back to aperture priority. The self timer button gives you a delay so that you've got time to get into the picture yourself. The multiple exposure button allows you to set multiple exposures. The ISO button allows you to set film speeds and you can also set DX setting as well so that the camera will read the uh, DX setting from the cartridge. When rewinding film after you've finished the roll this camera is a little different to most others. It'll stop winding and the LCD will flash at the end of the roll but you have to press both the ME button on the left and this rewind button for the roll to rewind back into the cartridge. The drive button controls how the film advances. You've got single shot, continuous low which is 2 frames per second and continuous high which is 3.3 frames per second. On the front of the camera here is the depth of field preview button. That allows you to view the depth of focus at the taking aperture. This is the focus lock button for when you're using continuous autofocus. On the other side of the camera is the lens release button and you can see the Nikon F mount which was used from the 1950s up until recently. This prong is very important because this allows non autofocus glass, the older Nikon lenses going back to the 1970s, it allows them to couple with the meter on the camera so that you can use the light meter uh, with non autofocus lenses. A lot of consumer cameras made by Nikon removed this which stopped you being able to meter or have automatic exposure with the older lenses. Down here are the autofocus settings. On manual you can focus manually. Single shot will focus once before you take the picture. Continuous will keep focusing while you're taking pictures or while the subject is moving around. On the bottom of the camera is the tripod socket and this is the screw for allowing you to put the batteries in. I'm not going to undo it now but the really useful thing about this camera is that you can use AA batteries, it takes four of them and so you can buy those in your local supermarket quite easily rather than having to order a lithium battery off of the internet. Autofocus is reasonably fast on this camera. It's fine for subjects like portraiture but it may not be fast enough for sports photography. Loading film is simple. Just squeeze these two buttons to open the camera back, pop the film cassette in firmly like that, pull the film leader down as far as that red mark 
Once you've done that, close the camera back and press the shutter. And now you're advanced to frame one. Although it's quite heavy, this is a full featured, durable camera that costs hardly anything on eBay. It also allows you to use older Nikon lenses so you can save even more money. I've fitted a Nikon Series E 100mm 2.8 here. This is from about 1978. Uh, there's no autofocus, but because of that metering prong I told you about, it allows you to have manual uh, metering and also aperture priority automatic exposure. It was produced between 1988 and 1995, which is a long shelf life for an AF SLR. For using old Nikon glass, as well as having autofocus, this is one of your best options. I hope this was useful. Please like and subscribe if you're enjoying these videos.